Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now talk about recessive epistasis. Now that we have discussed dominant epistasis, I am sure you would have got an idea about what could be recessive epistasis. So here a recessive gene that is recessive homozygous genotype suppresses the expression of a non-allelic gene. Like in the previous case, case, you saw that the white color showed its epistatic effect only when it was present in the dominant condition. But here we will look at an example, the pigmentation in onion bulb and here we would see that the color would be determined or the epistatic effect will be seen only when the gene is present in the homozygous recessive condition. Okay, so let us discuss about it in more detail. So when we talk about the pigmentation in onion bulb, there are three types of pigmentation which are possible. So what are the three types? So the three possible colors of pigmentation are red, yellow and white. So out of this, this white color appears due to the presence of a pigment inhibitor gene which is epistatic only in the recessive state. Now what happens? Why does it get red color or yellow color? So this red or yellow color is because of the presence of some pigment which gives give it the color. Now if there is a gene which inhibits that pigment, which doesn't allow that pigment to function, then what will happen? The, it, it, the onion bulb will not get that color, right? So basically this white, so and that is when that color will not appear. So if that color doesn't appear, then what would be the color of the pigmentation? It would be white because there is no other color now. So white color basically appears when the pigment inhibitor gene is present. Now that pigment inhibitor gene, so this appears when the pigment inhibitor gene is present because pigment inhibitor gene doesn't allow the pigments to work. Therefore, it doesn't allow the onion bulb to get a red or yellow color because red and yellow colors are due to presence of pigments. Now, when these colors don't, don't appear, then obviously the pig pigmentation color is white. Now, this pigment inhibitor gene ep is epistatic. This is the epistatic gene. Okay, so this is our epistatic gene and this gene shows its epistatic effect only in the recessive condition, right? So let us say that we denote this gene by I because it is the inhibitor gene. So capital I, small i are the two alleles of this gene. But this gene will show its epistatic effect only when it is present in homozygous recessive condition. That means when, only when it is present in this condition, it will show its epistatic effect. Epistatic effect means what? This gene will stop the phenotypic expression of red and yellow and as a result the pigmentation color of the onion bulb will be white. So basically what we understand is the pigmentation color of the pigmentation in onion bulb will be white only when small i small i is present. So only in this condition the epistatic effect of this pigment inhibitor gene will be seen. So let us now for, when we forget about this epistatic gene when we forget about this gene, what are the other two colors that we have? Red and yellow. Now out of red and yellow, it has been found that red is dominant over yellow. So red is denoted by capital R and yellow is denoted by small r because red and yellow, they are alleles on the same gene. So capital R, small r, they are represented by the same letter. But when you talk about the third color white, which is because of this pigment inhibitor gene, this is a different gene. So this is a non-allelic gene. So we are representing it with two uh, with a different letter that is capital I small i these are the dominant and recessive alleles of this particular gene okay so we are clear up to here now let us look at some examples of genotype and see what would be its phenotype so let's say if you have a genotype like this capital I capital I capital R small r so what would be its phenotype so let us first look at the inhibitor gene. So inhibitor gene is present in the dominant condition. So that means it will not show its epistatic effect because it shows its epistatic effect only in the recessive condition. Now capital R, small r, so capital R is dominant. So here the phenotype would be red. Similarly, if you have something like capital I, small i, capital R, capital R. In this case, again, if you look at this 
inhibitor gene it is again present in the dominant condition so it will not show its epistatic effect so here capital r capital r so the phenotype would be red now if you have something like small i small i capital r small r in this case the inhibitor gene is present present in the uh, homozygous recessive condition so this will show its epistatic effect so this will stop or hide the phenotypic expression of red and yellow so this time the color would be white similarly if you have something like capital i small i small r small r what would be the color in this case here again this is present in dominant condition so it will not show its phenotypic effect small r small r would actually mean yellow so here the color of the pigmentation would be yellow so here so do you now have you got an idea that how is recessive epistasis different from dominant epistasis? So in dominant epistasis, the epistatic gene shows its effect only in the dominant condition. And here the epistatic gene shows its effect only in the homozygous recessive condition. Now let us look at the exact inheritance of pigmentation in onion bulb. So let us start with the parents. So let's say that you have capital I, capital I, capital R, capital R and you cross it with small i, small i, small r, small r. So in this case, what would be the color? The pigmentation color would be red and here the pigmentation color would be white. So what would be the F1 generation? So the F1 generation would be hybrid, capital I, small i, capital R, small r. So however, the color would be red, but this is heterozygous, so hybrid red. Now in order to get F2 generation, we do a self cross that is capital I, small i, capital R, small r, crossed with capital I, small i, capital R, small r. So in this case, what would be the possible gametes that we get? So the possible gametes would be capital I, capital R, capital I, small r, small i, capital R, small i, small r. And likewise on this side as well. So let us write all possible genotypes. So once we have written all the possible genotypes, looking at each of the genotypes, we can tell their phenotypes and we have colored the boxes accordingly. And what do we see? How many reds do we get? So we get maximum number of reds, right? So how many reds do we get? So we get 9 out of 16 red. How many yellows do we get? So we get 3 out of 16 yellows. And what about the whites? So we get 4 out of 16. So this was the dominant allele, this was the recessive allele and this was the epistatic gene. So here if you find out the phenotypic ratio in the F2 generation, it comes out to be 9 is to 3 is to 4. So this is the dominant allele, this is the recessive allele and the last one shows the epistatic gene. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.